Hey guys, it's Smudge here, and we're back for round two in the Sabre. Um, now, I have been flying this for the last couple of hours, trying to get used to um, the characteristics of the aircraft. And I have to say, I've really started enjoying it. Um, I've learned quite a bit in the past couple of hours about how the aircraft handles, what some of the different switches do. And um, it's actually really quite more complex than I first thought. It's quite a lot of fun to fly. Uh, so I thought we'd come back here, um, see if we can... Uh, take off without damaging the aircraft, which would be a good start, and then have a, a nice little fly around and show off some of the characteristics of the aircraft. So, the first thing we're going to do now is just get the aircraft switch on, uh, taxi out, take off, and and then go from there. Uh, so, right, the takeoff sequence, or the startup sequence, should I say, sorry, is, is really quite simple. Uh, the first thing that you need is ground power, and you do that by contacting the ground crew, and then you press the power, power on. Now, one thing I have found is that. Ground power is now on. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, one thing I have found is that you can't start the aircraft without electrical ground power. Um, there's simply no way to start it from an internal battery. From all of the experiments I've tried, nothing seems to work in that regard. So, um, yeah, you must have, you know, or you must be on an, an airfield that allows you to uh, to connect to ground power or have some sort of power source available. Uh, now the next sequence, once your ground power's on and your lights have all lit up and the aircraft starts coming to life, you need to turn on the engine master switch. This is the starter switch here. You move it down first, then up into battery, and then put it into center. That'll start this needle here to it'll start climbing. When it gets to about 3%, you advance the throttle one notch. The throttle then start advancing even further when it gets to about 6 to 10%. You move the throttle further forward into idle. That will bring the engine to life. And then that's it. That's the aircraft alive. So let's do that now and hopefully this will work. Oh, there she goes. Engine exhaust temperature is in the green, which is good. If it peaks up here, which I've had a couple of times, that means that you're about to kill the engine, and that's not a good thing. So as you can see, we're about 6% there, so we'll advance the throttle further into idle. And then that allows the uh, engine to start spooling up normally there. Now, this little flashing light thing here was bugging the crap out of me for a while. And then uh, I realized that this aircraft actually has a radar, which was quite surprising to me. Um, this controls it, this is the radar range, and you can just switch it off there. And then you can start advancing up to a maximum range. Now, this actually works air to ground and air to air. So if you have a contact in front of you, this little light will start flashing. And it's a, you know, it's a good indicator that somewhere in front of you there's a, a, a bad guy or, or someone you know, that you might hit if you can't see them. Okay, so that's the engine spooled up normally now, so if we just hold the brakes in here and then uh, advance the throttle slightly, that should start progressing up nicely, and then, yep, there we go, so we'll just hold that off there, and then pull that back down to idle. Okay, so that's the engine working normally now, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, now, the, to close the canopy, you can either hit Control c or you've got this little button here, um, you just hold that forward, and then that will pull your canopy shut. Now, at the moment, it feels as though we're sat really quite high in the cockpit. You have to duck down quite low to see the gun sight. Uh, but there's a setting in the main menu that when you take off, as soon as your undercarriage is up and the aircraft is clean, the seat automatically lowers itself down until you sat down about here. So there's no need to worry about that. You know, you will notice when you get airborne that um, that, that sorts, it, sorts itself out. So. Uh, light switches down here, so we can put those on to um, steady when there's our, our lights on there. And then all we need to do now is taxi out, so here comes the fun bit. So I'll just ease up the power slightly, hold down the nose wheel steering key, and uh, I've pretty much glued my finger to it now, so I um, won't have hey, any more mishaps. Yep. Just piss off the Groo Chief by not telling him that we're, uh, that we're pulling away. And then we're going to turn right this time. So we'll just slow down a bit and then start steering. Now one thing you will find is that the steering is delayed. 
So it's delay to turn, it's delay to center. So it's it's sensible to take it in stages rather than just trying to turn the whole corner. So if you just turn a little bit, turn a little bit, turn a little bit until you're pointing where you need to go, then generally you won't throw yourself off the taxiway, which uh, trust me, I've done a couple of times now and it's a bit embarrassing. Oops, uh, close up the air brakes there as well. It's no good trying to take off with the air brakes out. You won't get very far very quickly. So start coming off the power and start braking lightly. And then turn into the corner here. Like I said, just ease off before you need to stop turning. Otherwise you'll uh, start throwing yourself all over the taxiway and damage the aircraft, which is uh, not a good thing. It's quite expensive. I'll just taxi out the remaining onto the runway here again not using communications just simply because I can't be asked turn onto the center line here and uh, again stop turning about now and then it should straighten up there we go so I'll just let it roll forward a, a little bit just to make sure that the steering's aligned let go of the steering switch and then hit the brakes now what we'll do oops there we go, nice little skid there, so we'll just increase the throttle. Make sure that the engine's stable, about 80%. No other problems, pressures all look good, fuel flow looks good. And the engine isn't going to blow up on us on takeoff, so we'll just release the brakes now. Pull ourselves back onto the centre. Start advancing the, the throttles nice and steady forward here. Start building up speed. Giving it left rudder here, trying to keep us straight. And here we go, so we're passing about 120 here, which is uh, about our takeoff speed. So we'll start easing back on the stick here, and up we go. Let's take off with about half flaps there, no need for any, any more than that. So we'll just pull the gear up here and then uh, pull the flaps up. adjust our trims and as you can see that the seats automatically lower down now that the undercarriage has come up uh, to bring us more into line with the gun sight so we can actually kind of um, you know see where we're aiming as such and then that's us airborne and throwing loads of sludge out of the back we'll just go to external here and have a look at this beautiful aircraft beautiful really isn't it so we'll just start easing off the power here now that we've uh, managed to climb out bring that back into the green so that we're not over stressing the engine and then we'll just trim make sure that the aircraft's gonna fly pretty much straight on its own now you see that little flight light flight little light flashing there uh, that's just to show that we're trimming laterally as in trimming left and right and then I'll just demonstrate something here. So like I said, this is your radar range. So if we just dial this in a little bit here. There we go. As you can see, it's turned off at the moment. But as I start nosing down, it'll start flashing. There you go. And then that's about the maximum range of, of the radar there. So if we start pulling up, it goes off. Push down, radar on. And then you can kind of control the range at that it's going to light up. Now there is quite a cool feature I found on here, you see a thing here called LABS, which is a kind of radar assisted bombing site. So if we just turn that on and uncage it, and I'm dialing the radar a bit, you can uncage the gun sight here. As you can see you've got a range here which you can use a, a couple of keys to range manually. But with the labs, once that's actually switched on, when you're pointing at the ground and the radar kicks in, you can see that it actually starts ranging itself automatically. And then that's ranging kind of where guns, bombs, rockets and things like that are going to land, uh, depending on what you've got selected with your weapon switch, which is down here. And that's quite handy. 
and as you can hear it turns out my pilot's an asthmatic. G there, you know, not much. So we'll just turn that off. I'll say that, we'll leave that on, we'll just cage up the gun sight so it's not flicking about all over the place. Uh, another thing I found here is that you've got a bombing computer, which is quite handy. Um, we'll switch this into bomb mode, which also kind of trains the targeting computer, but also raises your seat as well so that you can see down. So this isn't me moving, so if I just switch that into normal see that the seat moves down, which is uh, quite handy, so you move it into bomb. You can program your angle of attack using this rotary switch here. And then you've also got cards for different altitudes for approach. So you can kind of program in your, your bombing approach to be more accurate, I suppose, which is quite clever for an old aircraft like this. Yeah, that's the Sabre. It's, uh, it's quite a, a nice aircraft to fly. It's quite maneuverable. It rolls quite well, as you can see here. It also pulls quite hard, although I have found it in a couple of dogfights with, um, with MiG-15s that it doesn't turn as well as you'd hope it to. It is quite easy, like the Mustang, um, in order to bleed energy very quickly and then end up spinning yourself into the ground, which is, again, quite embarrassing, especially if you're fighting against someone else. Now, one thing I have found as well, and I've got a little training range just down there, as you can see, with some targets of opportunity. Um, the guns, uh, the gun selector down here, which is switched on automatically, and then you've got a gun switch over here, which arms either the upper guns, the middle guns, the lower guns. So you can fire them in pairs, or you can fire all of the guns at the same time, which is uh, it's quite beastly. So you've got six 50 caliber machine guns on the front there, and then it will just give the trigger a good squeeze. That's them firing up a few rounds. So that's 650 caliber machine guns, which is the same as the old P-51 Mustang. And, uh, you know, they do a fair amount of damage against soft targets and aircraft. So if we just come around here, uncage the gun size here. And then with lab switched on, and that switched the guns, it should predict where our rounds are going to land using the radar, which is quite clever. So we'll just see if we can give that a bit of a demonstration there. I'm just going to come off the power so I don't overspeed and I dive here. And then we'll head towards target a little bit more. It's down there somewhere. There it is. So we'll just fly towards target here. We'll uh, do a quick dive and give it a quick squirt with the gun, see if we can hit something. And then uh, demonstrate how the the radar ranging works. So we go. I know I've got some trucks on the end of the runway here, some nice soft targets. I'm going to throw up the air brakes here as well, which you can hear just to. Uh, there you go. That's the radar's kind of engaged, but it's spazzing all over the place here a bit. Drag the air brakes back in and start pulling up. Kill the truck there, that's not too bad. I think I might do those, increase the range on the radar there, see if that gives us a bit of a better read on the old radar on the way in there. Now, one thing I have found as well is that this thing doesn't seem to roll very well. It does get very, very sluggish on the top of a roll bleeds air speed very quickly on the way up but it gains very air speed very quickly on the way down. So drag out the air brakes there. That little alarm there is just to say that the um, that the uh, throttle has been brought down to minimum. It's jumping about all over the place there. A 
couple of hits on the truck there, he's burning. That's good enough for me. So I'll start powering up, drag the air brakes back in and start heading up again. So that's kind of how the lab system works here with the radar altimeter. I guess I need to um, practice a bit more with that, find out exactly kind of how to refine it and make it work properly. So I'll just turn the, the gain down on the radar there. And then cage up the gun sight. And then with the gun sight caged, again, it just becomes a, a static dot. So if that's what you prefer, rather than having gun sight dancing all over the screen, then you can do that. And again, if you uncage it with the labs turned off or no radar, it just that operates like a standard floating gun sight to lead shots going air to air, which is uh, quite handy as well if you know how to program it properly. Okay, so what we'll do here, we'll just uh, come in and, and land this thing and taxi back in for a bit of parking and, uh, you know, that should hopefully wrap this up quite nicely. <clears throat> just trim her out, it's constantly trimming this thing. Uh, whenever you change altitude or airspeed or attitude, it always seems to need a bit of a trim. Just again doing about 350 knots here on the way in, so what we'll do, so we'll do a turning brake. I'll just lose a bit of altitude here, coming over the airfield. Save our asthmatic pilot from uh, having a heart attack. Come over the airfield here. What we'll do is that we'll pop the air brakes, cut back on the throttle. Slightly higher G turn here just to bleed off all of our airspeed, which is coming down quite nicely now. Then come out on the downwind leg. Below 250 knots, so we'll just uh, lower the flaps down here in the undercarriage. And then re trim, trim all the way forward. Otherwise, you find out it's very, very difficult to control the nose. turn in for a short finals and hope that we don't mess this up. <laughs> now as you can see now that we've loaded the undercarriage, uh, the seat's raised up again which gives us a, a much easier view of the, the runway and what's going on on the way in. Got a nice bit of traffic down there today. So it's coming in about 150 knots on the nose, altitude seems about right. One thing you will find with this at low speeds, with it being a swept wing, it is very, very wallowy. It likes flapping all over the place, so it, it starts to become a bit of a handful to control. But we'll just cut back on the throttle here and start flaring. Getting a bit of a heavy landing there, but, uh, you know, we're down. It's not my best landing, that's for sure. the air brakes in. Now one thing I have found is that the brakes really do unsettle the aircraft on the on the ground. So we'll just let it roll towards the end of the runway here and bleed off some speed naturally and then we'll just start easing on the brakes and hope that we don't uh, th you know throw her over. So we go just easing on the tow brakes a little bit here just to uh, slow ourselves down a bit. As you can see it starts getting a little squirrely. Even just a slight amount of tow brake seems to lock up the main undercarriage there. And we'll hold down the nose wheel steering key and then uh, turn off the old runway here. Again, remembering that the uh, nose wheel steering is very delayed, so you must come off the steering long before you, you need to start going straight. And then uh, I'll glue my finger to the um, 
nose wheel steering key and I will taxi on it on in shut this thing down and then uh, and then that should be it get some air in so our asthmatic pilot can have a, a bit of a breather Again, locking up the brakes out with just the smallest tap of the toe. And then that's that, that's just parked. So that was a quite a successful flight. Didn't break anything this time, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. And then we'll, we'll just see if we can't uh, shut her down here. And that's that, that's the F86 Sabre in the Digital Combat Simulator or DCS. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've certainly enjoyed making it. And uh, Hopefully if I get enough likes and, and people want to see more then I'll uh, see if I can make some more videos uh, featuring this or the P51 or any of the other modules in DCS. So until next time, take care.